Hi. In this lesson, I'll introduce an online graphing tool that we will use for several modules in our class. We're also going to build on the idea of a different representation of a function. We began with the input-output idea. In this video, we'll touch upon the slope-intercept form of the function equation. If you remember, we used tables earlier on to represent the input and outputs of functions. Here, let's revisit one of the more simple functions we've looked at before. This one is y equals minus 2x plus 5. So along the first column marked x are the values we'll put into the equation. y are the values yet to be determined after we perform the function on the input values. So for the first line, if we put minus 2 in for x, the function becomes minus 2 times minus 2 is 4, and then plus 5 is equal to 9. So if we put in minus 2, the function returns 9. If we go ahead and put in minus 1, the function becomes minus 1 times minus 2, which is 2, plus 5, resulting in 7. If we put 0 in for x, that negates that term, and all we're left with is 5. If you see a pattern here, you're correct. As we increase x by 1, y decreases by 2. So the next value here is 3, 1, minus 1, minus 3, minus 5. Now this equation happens to be in the slope-intercept form. This first term in front of the x is called the slope. Sometimes in functions it's represented by m. It's minus 2. And then this is the intercept form. I'll show you what that means in just a bit. But if you look at these tables, the x values, as they increase by 1, y decreases by 2. That's a reflection that the slope is negative 2. So let's go ahead and move on to the next phase of this lesson. I want to show you how to visually represent this function as a graph. And we're going to use an online graphing tool called foodplot.com. So I'm going to go over here and open up an empty browser window. And the address for foodplot is fooplot.com. And when I come over here, I'm presented with a uh, um, just a standard graph, which we're going to change in a bit. Notice how the graph isn't quite rectangular. And what I want you to do for assignments is drag this by the little corner. And when you pull down, you can see in the center near the origin the dimensions of the graph in pixels. So I've changed mine to 650 by 650. And if I scroll down the web page a bit more, I can now change the axis bounds from minus 10x to 10. And if I copy that to the y-axis using this small orange arrow there, then the graph becomes square and the units are square. Right now, the units on the axes are demarked every other unit or by twos. And I want to change that with the grid spacing to ones. And so now my graph looks like this. It's looking a lot like the graph paper that you might have seen in other classes. So the, the first thing I want to do is uh, show you how to enter in point values. The point values, if we go back over to our function in the table form, every x value is paired with its resulting y value. So if we look at minus 2, that's paired with 9. Minus 1 is paired with 7. And these things translate to coordinates in the Cartesian plane. So what we're going to do is come over here, and I can add a variety of things to this graph using foodplot. I'm going to change it, though, from a function using the dropdown to points. And I'm going to click Add. Now notice they give us some sample points here, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 1, etc. Those aren't the points we're interested in. So I'm going to just select them all, hit delete, 
and then I'm going to enter in the points as we have them. So I'm going to put in minus 2 comma 9, minus 1 comma 7, and I'm hitting return after each y coordinate. 0 comma 5, 1 comma 3, and you can see the points are being generated as I type them in. You can also see that the points are forming a line. That's because they're being generated by a linear equation. All of the points in this line satisfy that equation. So if you were to take the x coordinate, like right there, I grabbed the 1. The 3 is the result, but if I put 1 into this equation, it becomes minus 2 plus 5 is equal to 3. It turns out that every point along this line, all these points that we've plotted, also satisfy this equation. Of course it did because we just used the equation to put the points in. But what happens if we draw, we can also use this equation grapher to put the exact line on there. So what we're going to do is we'll shorten this up here a little bit and change this points to a function. And we're going to add it and I'm going to change the default function. They give us x squared to show us what that looks like, but I'm going to put in minus 2x, and I'll put in a space plus 5, and I'll hit return, and you can see that it goes right through all of the points that we scaled. Another thing I'd like to show you with foodplot is that you can use, if you uh, hover your mouse over the graph, you'll see that these little orange controls show up. One, and if you move your mouse over each of those, there's um, specific little functions each does. I want you to look at the trace command. If I click on that, the cursor turns into cross arrows, and then I can click on the graph, and there's a little orange square that shows up. And as I move this along, you can see it stops on my points. We've entered 4, comma, minus 3, and that's there. But it also it puts in all the points in between. And each one of these points actually satisfies the equation. Now there's a little bit of uh, there's approximation here because these points are decimals for the most part between the, the points listed, and I think the precision is only showing to the tenths. But if we went smaller and magnified in, it's just giving you the approximate value of those points. But the important thing is that they all satisfy the equation y equals minus 2x plus 5. Now, the next thing we're going to be doing with Foodplot is saving our work, and you're going to be showing, in many cases, your peers what you've done. And so any kind of online tool, it's very useful to be able to save your work. So if you scroll down, there's two ways you can save it. The first is you can export it as a graphic, and I'm going to leave it as SVG here. Um, and I just go ahead and hit download, and I'm asked to save the file at a particular point. I'll go ahead and save it, and now my graph is saved. The other way to do that is click on permalink, and a little window will show up. And if you notice that this URL still points to Foodplot, but it's on a very specific URL, that encoding there in the address stores all of the information that is associated with our graph. The line, the points, the colorization, the size of the axes, etc. So I'm going to right click on that and hit copy link location. And just to show you that this has saved everything. I'm going to come up here and close our window out and then I can go open up a new blank window and I'll paste that address in, hit return, and the entire graph has been recreated. So that's a nice easy way you could email me in assignments or submit them on a blog for discussion. That's the end of this lesson. I'll see you back on the blog for comments and get a hold of me if you have any questions. Thanks.